Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Snake Eyes or lion -O, and like and subscribe for less sobriety next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Bender Rodriguez. Unlike the other Benders we've built, this one is from Futurama, not Avatar. You might not think Futurama characters fit into D&D, but consider this. He was a tool, made to be a cog in the machine, became an ambivalent criminal drifter, then pursued his lifelong dream as a folk musician. He's the perfect D&D character. You give metal benders a bad name! Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to bend, taking some metal and making it look different. Next, we need to do some other robot stuff, most notably constantly changing abilities depending on what's funny in the moment. Finally, we'll do some crimes. Crimes are so very fun. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Strength will be number one, that's gotta be the bending stat. Constitution after that, booze isn't just a hobby for you, it's a fuel source. Charisma next, you're so good at the washboard, you get to play with Beck's band, or I guess Beck's heads band. Dexterity is higher than you might think, it's useful for picking pockets and stealing things. Intelligence is a bit low, you're definitely not a nerd and will dump wisdom. Part of being a mom bot is that mom can remote control you pretty much whenever she wants. Thank God we don't have any tech conglomerates in the real world with important devices in our homes that they can control. Bender is a robot. Warforged are robots, unless they're cyborgs or androids, but holy moly, I don't care. Warforged get plus two constitution and plus one strength if those are the stats you want. I think they're pretty good. You get integrated protection, letting you merge with a set of armor you're proficient with and add one to the AC. You get 40% titanium, 40% scrap metal, 40% dolomite, 40% wired, 40% luck. Your constructed resilience lets you resist poison damage, gives you advantage on saving throws against being poisoned, and you you don't need to eat, drink, or breathe, letting you power yourself with moonshine and float endlessly through space until you become a god. Honestly, you don't even need to sleep, instead just powering down for a sentry's rest, hanging out while alert for four hours. Grab sleight of hand for your free skill and take the criminal background for deception and stealth, helping you commit all the crimes you want, which is, incidentally, a lot of crimes. We'll kick things off as a fighter, giving you two skills from the fighter list, athletics and history will be my picks, athletics for bending, and history to explain things to the new guy you met at the suicide booth. Grab unarmed fighting for your fighting style, letting you make unarmed attacks that deal 1d6 plus your strength modifier in bludgeoning damage, 1d8 when you have two free hands, and a d4 of damage to a creature you have grappled once per round. I would imagine being bended is not pleasant. You also get second wind, letting you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. It's a quick fix, even if it's not a full fix. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest, letting you grapple and pummel someone in the same round like putting too much air into a balloon. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype, and if you want to get stretchy arms, I feel like Rune Knight is a great way to do that. That lets you activate Giant's Might, adding a d6 of damage to one attack around, making you large so you can bend huge sized creatures, and you have advantage on strength checks and saves, which would include grappling. You also get two runes that give you additional power. The Frost Rune will give you advantage on intimidation and animal handling checks, and lets you add two to your strength and constitution checks for 10 minutes once per short rest. You're going to need all the help you can get to beat Flexo. The Cloud Rune will give you advantage on sleight of hand and deception checks to steal more, and once per short rest you can make an attack that would hit one creature within 30 feet of you, hit another creature within 30 feet of you, just get really tall and have the would-be attackers slide through your legs. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement, bumping your strength will increase your bending, we want that as big as possible, as fast as possible. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action, or up to four with an action surge. Remember, a grapple is a type of attack so that's a free grapple and pummel in the same turn. Six level fighters get another ability score improvement, cap off your strength score before we start multi-classing to get better at grapples. And obviously, the best grappling class is Bard, because Bards get musical instrument proficiency for your washboard abs. That doesn't help with grappling. You also can grab another skill of your choice, like performance, to make the kind of weird, annoying sounds Beck loves to put in his music. You get cantrips and spells, like Vicious Mockery, forcing a wisdom saving throw against a creature, and dealing 2d4 psychic damage if they 
they fail while also giving them disadvantage on their next weapon attack, I would imagine it's pretty hard to actually bite someone's shiny metal ass. Prestidigitation does a bunch of little flavor stuff, making a puff of smoke, warming things, cooling things, it's all your auxiliary features. For some reason, the bending robot also has a grill in his belly that'd be like if your telephone lets you play video games. For first level spells, Silvery Barbs lets you insult someone trying to make an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw as a reaction, forcing them to roll with disadvantage. You humiliate them so thoroughly, it then gives another creature within 30 feet of you advantage on an ability check, saving throw, or attack roll. Since that can be yourself, you can use your reaction to bully someone and then make yourself better with bullying. It's the perfect bender spell. Featherfall prevents up to five falling creatures from taking falling damage, letting you catch Leela, Fry, Burger, Milkshake, and Onion Rings. Can you tell I haven't eaten lunch yet? Long Strider adds 10 feet to a creature's movement speed. You can literally make your strides longer. It makes sense. Finally, Bane forces a Charisma saving throw on three creatures, giving them a d4 penalty to their attack rules and saving throws for up to a minute depending on your concentration. Pairs really well with Silvery Barbs to fully demoralize your foes. But if you'd rather be uplifting, use your Bardic Inspiration tie to encourage party members. That's a d6 they can add to ability checks, saving throws, or attack rolls. That doesn't sound very bender, but we're going to get another option that's much more in character. Second level Bards get a Song of Rest, letting friendly creatures heal an extra d6 on short rests as the soothing, scratchy sounds of washboard lull them to sleep. You're also a jack of all trades, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to any skill you're proficient with, making you more of a multitasking machine. For this level spell, Comprehend Languages lets you understand all spoken and written languages, giving you a universal translator. You can't speak the languages, at least not yet, but we'll get them soon. Third level bards get Expertise, letting you double your proficiency bonus with two skills. I'd go for Athletics for maximum bending and Sleight of Hand, since we're not going to be able to invest in Dexterity as much as I'd like, and you definitely need to yoink. You also get to choose a Bardic College and Eloquence might not seem like a bender thing, but if you check the abilities, they fit our favorite robot pretty well. Your Silver Tongue sets the minimum of your Persuasion and Deception checks to 9, followed by your modifiers. As a robot, you might literally have a Silver Tongue. Unsettling Words gives you another way to berate people, letting you use your Bardic Inspiration die as a bonus action. A creature of your choice then has to subtract that from their next saving throw. Then, you can use Silvery Barbs as a reaction to make them even worse. For your second level spell, Enlarge Reduce lets you make a creature one size larger or smaller, go for larger on your Self, pop giant smite, and now you can grapple any creature in the game and bend them. You also deal an extra d4 of damage with your attacks with weapons and get advantage on strength checks and saves. If you make a creature smaller, they get the opposite effects, but they can make a wisdom saving throw to resist. That's not in character, I just wanted to get stretchy and grab things. Fourth level bards get another ability score improvement, start working on your charisma for more inspiration die to insult people, and better insults with vicious mockery. You can also use knock to blow up a lock or a hinge, even if it makes a giant loud noise that can be heard a thousand feet away. Use your silver tongue to convince people it wasn't you anyway. Fifth level bards get Font of Inspiration, letting your inspiration die recover on short rests instead of long rests, and they bump up to a d8 to really ruin people's day. You also get third level spells like Tongues to speak all languages and get that true universal translator going. Bender speaks French. That language has been dead for centuries. Sixth level eloquence bards get another option for that with universal speech, letting you choose a number of creatures within 60 feet of you equal to your charisma modifier, and they all understand your speech for an hour. You also get Unfailing Inspiration, so if a creature uses your bardic inspiration die and fails, they don't lose it. Honestly, unsettling words is much more in character. For some long-range communication, sending lets you send a message of 25 words or less to a creature that's on the same plane as you, and even to another plane with a 5% failure chance. Can you imagine that? If there was technology that lets you communicate with people thousands of miles away from you, that'd be some super high-tech stuff. Seventh level bards can learn fourth level spells. Freedom of movement stops you from getting paralyzed, restrained, or slowed down by anything like difficult terrain. You can also break out of non magical shackles with five feet of movement, just bending those handcuffs right off of you. These benefits last for an hour, no concentration required. Eighth level bards get an ability score improvement, keep pushing your charisma up higher and higher to be a better liar and liar. There's some bars for bender to bend. But if you need to break instead of bend, use the shatter spell to force a constitution saving throw on creatures and structures in a 10 foot radius, dealing 3d8 thunder damage shows that fail. Inorganic materials and creatures made of inorganic materials have disadvantage on saves, so it's great for breaking down walls and barriers. It's great to get you into the bank, then use knock to break the lock, and silver tongue to lie about it. Ninth level bards can learn fifth level spells. Skill empowerment lets you give a creature expertise in a skill they're proficient with for up to an hour depending on your concentration, but you could also just get expertise in more skills with one more level of bard, because tenth level bards get expertise in two more skills. Deception and stealth will help you get away with your crimes through speech or get away from your crimes without being caught. Your bardic inspiration die bumps up to a d10 here as well, and you get magical secrets, two spells you can learn from any list. Create food and water spontaneously creates food 
and water. Does it taste good? Not really, but it exists. Bender can make food, he's just not all that good at making it taste good since he can't taste it. Dragon's Breath lets you give a creature a breath weapon that forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cone, dealing 3d6 acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison damage. Fire is the most accurate for your flaming belches. They take half damage if they succeed. 11th level bards can learn 6th level spells. Irresistible Dance forces a creature to dance on their first turn, giving other creatures advantage on attacks against them. They have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws and use all their movement dancing. This lasts for a minute or until you drop your concentration or the creature uses their action to make a wisdom saving throw and pass, of course. Washboard is an excellent rhythm instrument, really gets your feet moving. 12th level bards get another ability score improvement. Keep pushing your charisma modifier up. I wish we could cap it off, but unfortunately we don't have the wiggle room. You make steel flexible, but that doesn't mean you're all that flexible. 13th level bards can learn 7th level spells, but I don't need any. Instead, let's just get better at cooking with Hero's Feast. It takes 10 minutes to whip up, but it makes enough food for 12 creatures and it takes them an hour to eat it. At the end of that hour, creatures who ate your food become immune to poisoning and frightening. They're cured of any poisons and diseases and get 2d10 more hit points. Real, honest to goodness hit points that can be healed up like normal hit points, not temporary HP. All those buffs last for 24 hours. Our capstone is the 14th level of Eloquence Bard for Infectious Inspiration, letting you use your reaction when someone else uses your inspiration die to pass that die onto another creature an amount of times per long rest equal to your charisma modifier. That basically doubles your inspiration die, and while insulting people is clearly Bender's MO, by the end of the series, he's pretty attached to the meat sacks in the party. You also get two more magical secrets. Stone Skin gives a creature resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for an hour, depending on your concentration, to get that real titanium skin. Draw Midge's Instant Summons lets you store an item of 10 pounds or less to be summoned later. It lasts an endless amount of time, so it's a great way to store things in your torso. Storso Torso. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you are a bending expert with a massive athletics check if you use the frost rune and advantage on those checks if you use giant's might or enlarge reduce. You're also loaded with expertise in other skills like sleight of hand, stealth, and deception, making you quite the thief. Finally, you really ruin enemy morale with spells like vicious mockery and bane and abilities like unsettling words to get them down to the level of the rest of your party. For weaknesses, we're a bard without a capped charisma modifier, meaning you don't have five inspiration die. You're also not really dealing all that much of damage with no spells beyond second level that deal damage of any kind. Finally, low intelligence and wisdom mean you're going to be susceptible to some nasty saving throws, so watch out for brain benders. Thankfully, you're crafty enough that you won't have to fight all that often. Lie, cheat, and bend. Just watch out for spells that could dominate you. Otherwise, you could be crying out for your mommy. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Lionel or Snake Eyes and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun. That was not a short script. I don't know why I thought it was.